okay. Ew. Hello, my name is Sal. I make videos whenever I feel like it, and today I felt like rejoining the YouTube sphere. I have many videos I still need to edit, so I really can't guarantee when this will come up and um if the timeline's a little off then forgive me but i thought it'd be nice to just record another week in my life including a read with me type of vlog i am still reading three women it's taking me forever and i think i just i really want to get through this before i start another book i tried to start mexican gothic and then i felt bad about it so i will finish this and I will have a conjoined, like, additional vlog on the side since I am also, also reading. reading. <laughs> Why did that come out like that? <laughs> since I am also reading uh, Ruin and Rising by Lee Bardugo, the infamous Lee Bardugo, the legend, um, not a myth, and uh, definitely a person. <sighs> and let's go. Let's, let's go and live a life, okay? Join me as we live. <laughs> I just finished her. Oh. Um, if you can't tell. Oh. Yep, this is a... Um, that's a five out of five. That's a five out of five. That was gorgeous. That was um, painful and beautiful and a blessing and um, full, just so full. Every every moment, every word, well chosen. Um, nothing, nothing empty about this book. Nothing empty about this baby. <sighs> cool, I'm gonna eat after, yeah, I need maybe some water. <laughs> People sitting in seats and that, that's, but the process is- I will never tire of a nice golden hour shot, okay? I, I'm sorry if this bores you, but it doesn't bore me, so. A wee time jump. Um, I'm in a different outfit. I'm about 140 pages into Three Women, and it's scary. It's getting gross. It's getting gross! Because uh, Maggie, our dear old Maggie, is getting into a relationship with her, with her, with her teacher. And it's um, disgusting. It's disgusting. And I don't like reading about it, but it is so well written that I'm like, well, I need to get through it. And I hope that there's a point to it. And I just really hope that Lena and Maggie especially have lovely endings because this is too much. The skin is like freaking out. Let's go. He refuses to let go of the arm, but doesn't want to be touched, but won't fall asleep. <laughs> no, let me get that, let me get that face, girl. Let me get that face, look at that model. <laughs> We're already tired from the stairs. Funny. So, tell YouTube how embarrassing it is that I haven't vlogged the whole day. Uh, we have met friends. We have went to cooking store. We have eaten Indonesian food. We have, we, we have went. We have went. We have went. We have went to every. We have area. gone. I don't care. We have I don't care. Gone. <laughs> don't care. It's bad. I haven't vlogged at all. But uh, I have a bag full of new stuff because. Tell them where we are. Capitalist. We're in, capitalist whore. We're in Den Haag. We're in Den Haag. Correct. That is a fact. Yes, that is it. Physically, we're in Den Haag. Mentally, Mentally I'm in I'm my. In I'm in I'm in my reading nook, reading Poppy War, if which anyone, I bought today. If anyone has any methods for shifting, please tell me. Down below okay, the let's not feed Gwenny's mental illness. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to correct me? <laughs> um, we are about to find some tea and some pasta to eat before we go home. And uh, look, I could have filmed my Indonesian food for you. I ate bakso malang and otak otak I and pempek. Uh, I am bak sama otak otak. I do not have the kind of self control to not eat it right away once it's in front of me. So, and it's Indonesian food too. Oh, this lighting is so good for pictures, bro. All right, looks like Gwenny's <laughs> gonna ask me to take her some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> okay, really, really, yeah. I got my prints. 
I have this pot from Monkey and I got the vine plant from Mom. Thank you. So now we're gonna try to repot this. Heck yeah, and I got Ray Bearer, I got the Poppy War, and I got a mug. Oh, and I got some um, nice tie-dye socks and a booby sock. I'm <laughs> just stuffing things back. Look, if any of you are gardeners, don't judge me, okay? I have zero experience. And I, uh, she I'm really, using, she messed up the table. I'm using brute force instead of, okay, Chewy. We're having a conversation here. I'm gonna, should I update to the iOS 14? It looks horrendous, Gwenny. No, but it looks kind of like when you, like, you can, like, organize it, it looks kind of sick, bro. No, should I update to the iOS 14? Yeah. <laughs> Comment down below. Comment down below. Okay, this already looks like it's overflowing, but I'm proud of her for doing her best. Cause we're standing on the edge of gray, on the edge of gray, gray. Hey, can you not? <laughs> this is pure chaos. <laughs> Why your feet look like that, though? <laughs> <laughs> she got thick thighs. She got thick everything. Oh no, not her butt. No, she her got butt's a quite flat small. butt. Oop. Oop. <laughs> Look at her. She's gorgeous. Never speak to me again. And uh, this is also a tad messy that we need to clean up. But look at this mug. Beautiful, beautiful thing. I feel like I'm just turning into a rustic aunt, like with these dried flowers and the lavender candle and this thing. And I can't stop myself. I really can't. Did a little bit of the of the the, 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 the wall, the wall. Um, I got some prints from Etsy and uh, I decided to print them out myself. No, not myself, I ordered them. I don't know if I like this placing right now. Maybe, maybe not. But I got my soul is my God. I am here to, I'm free to create, I can't read. That's a snake. That's a painting that says I was not made to be subtle and it says fire sign energy as we're gonna get in this room. That is a tarot card the sun on top of um a dictionary and that's the hindu goddess kali so this is this is the nook now what do you what do you think huh huh this looks like a ghost sighting wow spooky my room's a little bit of a mess i know i need to clean it you don't need to tell me you don't need to be judging me from afar i know okay i know this is good cop bad cop let's do that okay but i want some self-care before I clean up my mess like a grown-up. Let me be indulgent like a pampered baby. I'm gonna put this on. This is like a Japanese foot thing that you put on. You can put it on while you sleep. I'm gonna leave it on the rest of the night. And you put it on the, uh, that. And then it's supposed to fix you. Hopefully it fixes me. Cause uh, I did a lot of damage walking around Den Haag today. I didn't even walk a lot, but you know what? I'm not, I'm not one to exercise by walking. So my feet feel bloated. I feel like I've been carrying a child with me. It's not my child. It was just my new pot, <laughs> which I will be showing off for the rest of this video because I am so happy with her. I will also be finishing or hopefully finishing because what time is it? It's already 9.20 and I gotta be in Utrecht tomorrow for a meeting. Bidam. I want to read as much of Ruin and Rising as much as I can. Um, and I know it will ruin me, literally. I guess I'll see you when I start weeping. Some light, perhaps, because I'm in the dark. <laughs> the Darkling just told Elena what his actual given name is, was, I don't know. I'm sorry, the whole scene is just the Darkling telling her how much he doesn't love her and just needs her as a tool to power. And Alina's like, hot and dangerous. <laughs> Alina, baby, I get it, I get it. You're thirsty and you're desperate and the world is ending. I get it, you know, I get it. But like, babe, baby, you cannot, you cannot be serious. She's like, don't, I'm like, girl, this dude killed, all of the Grisha committed genocide. 
in one night and you witnessed all of it. <laughs> what is happening? Even Bella Swan seems a little bit more in the right headspace than Alina. Good morning. Um, <laughs> I really needed to go to bed last night because the page, like the words on the iPad screen started literally shifting. Like they were all flipping around and moving. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. It's definitely time to sleep because I have nothing left in me. So I fell asleep at like 11, but I'm feeling all right. I definitely like had enough rest. Hey puppy. <laughs> Doesn't want to be bothered. Sir? Excuse me, sir? <laughs> sir? Chewie is accompanying me while I do my makeup. Yeah, puppy. <laughs> what do we think? Okay, so this is the final look. I was supposed to go to a more official meeting, but the meeting has been canceled because everyone's not feeling well. So I took off the blazer and put on a bomber jacket instead. And uh, I'm gonna head to Utrecht to O Cafe, I believe. And I'm just gonna hang out and do some work and get to know each other. Okay, see you. Oh, makeup look. Chewy is adamant on joining. Chewy, you're not coming with. Bubby, they're calling you. Can you just grab the dog, please? <laughs> sorry, dog. No, you're not coming with, Bubby. I'm sorry. Hi, so uh, I found my way back home. I couldn't emote <laughs> on the train in the midst of the plot twist that I saw coming. I literally saw this coming and I'm in pain. I am in pain. I can't believe I really said, you know what? If the man's gonna sacrifice himself for this girl, he might actually be hot. I got issues. I don't know how to deal with this with this series anymore. Neither does Chewy. I literally can't pick up another book anymore because my brain just keeps going to the Firebird. The Firebird. Firebird was a horrible name. I'll give Lee Bardugo that. That was not a good name. Babes, not gonna lie, I almost cried. That scene where Lena had a breakdown because of Karamzin. Karamzin? Karam. <laughs> I really do not speak Russian. Um, I almost shed a tear. The culprit. Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> I finished class. It was a bit heavy. I'm like starting to feel the effects and the dragginess of um, Zoom. Or, well, we use Microsoft Teams, which is a little bit better, but it's still horrendous to have online classes. But now I'm starting to get like flashbacks from Hong Kong and I'm studying abroad and how depressing it was to just wake up, go to class, and then sit in front of the screen for hours. Um, it's, we're starting to return back to that sort of mindset and all I really want is just to drink tea and read books in my room which sounds super pretentious it's more just like I want to turn my brain off and do what I personally enjoy and edit videos, you know all the dumb stuff that I do on my spare time but uh, I can't do that instead I have to read texts and um, pseudo interact with people through screens which is just what a weird existence to have you know we thought 2020 was going to be the time of flying cars instead it's just talking to your friends through a screen for hours and hours and hours on end my brain feels like it's exploding already so i'm gonna get some grub get some grub on huh gotta do something man i need to get out of the house and chewy found a snail so gotta fix that chewy I have so many pages left, Chewie. <laughs>
the sun on the sold out soul reminds me of um the red dawn rise as red as the dawn oh my god <laughs> no the parallels okay Whew, my heart is beating so fast Oh, no. I know it. I know it. Nikolai, you know what? You know what? You know what? The Darkling, for someone supposed to be big, bad, and scary and evil, it's a lot of theatrics, okay? The drama of it all, the theater of him <laughs> putting up this. Uh, mm? Alina, your antagonist, your nemesis, is a theater student. As a theater kid. Ugh, how shameful. All right, ladies, I just finished chapter 16. If you know, you know. That was a beautiful scene. Um, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I have a question about um, YA fantasy and uh, the scene of getting together always being like somewhat gross in the middle of battle. Like, that was what happened in Red Queen. And I remember the mortal instruments, I think they were in a cave of some sort. And I remember reading that and I was like, how are they, how being, are they being safe? safe? Wait a damn minute. <laughs> what? Anyways. um, All right. Time for a review. If you don't care about Shadow and Bone, Ruin and Rising, Lee Bardugo, etc., stay here. If you do and you haven't read it yet, click off, okay? I'll have a... I'll have a time right here when you can click off or click back. Okay, I really, really enjoyed the fact that Alina got to grief over the Darkling and had to like let him go herself, that she was there next to him while he died. Spoiler alert. I do feel like the death was a tad bit abrupt. Like the final, the final battle went really quick. Considering how much um, suspense was built, beforehand i thought this was going to be like every other ya series where it was just complete disaster you know like really really dramatic like in slow motion and dramatic music in the background as everybody's fighting for their lives and he, like alina's watching everybody slowly die this was actually more realistic in battle and she was like in like quick like fight or flight senses and she was like a soldier i think she was thinking like a soldier um mal's resurrection sort of makes sense to be honest like the whole idea of like Merzost and um Santa Ilya I was like sort of lost throughout a lot of it until like we understood that Morozova is actually um Bagra's father Th like that started making sense Ooh, that started making sense to me but before that I was kind of like Ugh. and also um the firebird being Rafka I didn't completely get it I understand that it means it was a noble bird, as in like it was just powerful and like otherworldly and it had like nothing to do with this battle. I get that, I just didn't fully understand the description and maybe that was the point. I can't believe that I'm actually really into Mal, Mal, I still can't pronounce his name, by the end of this, like I know a lot of people didn't like the fact that Alina ended up with him. Him being resurrected and like Bardugo's explanations of like the Merzost finally finding like a full circle and like the balance in nature and that he had two lives one of which was the curse and the second is like his own human mortal life I sort of understand but not fully that I feel like it's kind of a little bit of a stretch but I do enjoy I do enjoy Mal and Alina and I do enjoy the ending um yeah it was just super happy it was a super happy ending because like no matter how bittersweet it is for alina um and of course really interesting to do a gender reading of like this like this protagonist one of the first few that i've seen um who is power hungry and a woman um basically get all of her powers ripped away from her and it's not something that she finds peace with, you know? Although it is something that she started out as, as a powerless young girl, and now she sort of has to come back to it. She essentially gets what she wishes for because that's the whole time she had her power, she was pining to be normal and to give Mal that normal life that she always wanted to have with him. Um, and now that she's finally gotten it, she misses her powers. 
and I think that's so realistic and I really really enjoyed that part of the ending um and yeah like considering how disastrous how disastrous this war has been the ending was super happy and the fact that they still regularly visited Alina at the orphanage in Kramzin just makes me really warm and um I don't know if Bardugo is just a fan of happy endings or if she does if she, or if she's into fan service but uh consider this fan serviced <laughs> I have a lot of problems with the first two books and this last one just really really drove it home for me um I can't remember who I was watching maybe it was Kat from Paperback Dreams but she was talking about how like if I need to read a bunch of different books before I get to the good part, then the series isn't very good to begin with. And I think that's that rings very true for Shadow and Bone and this whole Grishaverse trilogy. However, I do feel like all of my meaningless reading finally paid off with the ending and the pining and the found family that this novel gave me. Anyways, this is my treat. What should I read next? I'm thinking, finish Three Women. This is the second vlog that I'm reading, Three Women. And start Frankenstein. I started a chapter of Mexican Gothic, but I don't think it's the weather for it yet. It's still pretty sunny and it'll be sunny for another two days. So I don't think it's the vibe yet. I want it to be cold. I want it to be raining once I start reading a haunted house Gothic horror novel, so. Okay, wait, also a really good thought that I just remembered is that the story is super compelling. This war, um, the Darklings coming into power, the court, the soldiers, the Soldat Soul. So many of this story, especially in Ruin and Rising, was so exciting. It's just Alina. Alina's narration and her point of view and what she valued the most during this war is what drove me mad. I think that's what it was. All of the other characters were great. I don't know if I can say that narration from any of the other characters would have been better. Probably not. Um, but I think the inner monologue that Alina had, especially like concerning romance, her power monologue was sort of like interesting. I think a lot of the yearning for normal normality and then yearning for power um, was really compelling but her romance brain just made it super annoying to read about. So I think maybe the Grisha trilogy, the Grishaverse trilogy would have been much, much better if it was told either in a third person point of view, where we then get to see more of the Darkling um, and his sort of grapple with power and his ancient history and all the things that he's seen way before Alina's time. Um, or like a non- like a third person point of view that follows Alina's gangly group of friends without having to actually look into her brain whenever she starts talking about a man because that is embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for her and it's embarrassing for me to read, okay? <sighs> I realize that. <laughs> really, I wanna hold a view though. Yeah, like it makes no sense. It's called the yeah, body kit, but it's. The windowsill shot has improved with our new addition to the family. Welcome, Brenda. <laughs> We're not naming her Brenda, I'm so sorry. Well, that was not a good accent. Good morning. <laughs> I'm turd. I'm turd. And um, I fell asleep at 8.30 last night like a good adult. I've been falling asleep super early lately. I don't, I have things to do. It's not like I don't have things to do at night. It's just that I don't have the strength to keep going anymore. <laughs> I just wanted to end. COVID is really getting to me. I have like really, really good weeks. Like I'm so happy I'm alive. I could cry weeks. And then I have like really bad weeks where I don't want to be touched, talked to, or looked at for 70 hours, you know? Um, and we're sort of like in between right now. I think I'm coming out of like the, the dip. So maybe I'll stay awake longer if I have more reason to live longer for the day, you know? I have class today. 
at 9 or 10. I don't know yet. I have to check the syllabus. I woke up at like 6.30 because I slept so early. Let me do some do some work. I, I gotta post a video today, so I have to edit, that's for sure. But the thought of just staring at a computer screen from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. makes me want to cry and go back to sleep. I'll just send in my networking because the other map is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Not worth the conversation. <laughs> Hello, update on the drama. Um, that's all of my credits. I am gonna graduate with 10 extra course credits, baby. <laughs> so believe it or not, the hardest part of my education in university has been trying to graduate. <laughs> it's been rough, it's been rough. Um, essentially, a lot of the I had my study abroad grades that couldn't be processed because I needed conver conversion forms. However, these conversion forms had to be requested from an office that was closed for the time being during the summer. So I had to wait until September. And my thesis grades at the same time also came in late because we had an extension due to COVID. And of course, then you also get a grading extension. Um, so while this was happening, I was already enrolled or like conditionally accepted to enroll in Utrecht University. So I, I'm i enrolled in two, and then I had to re-enroll in Radboud while I wait, so my bachelor's, while I wait for my bachelor's to get processed for all of my credits and all of the, ex and for the examination board to process my requests. While this is happening, Utrecht, no, Radboud needs a certificate or like a proof of payment called the BBC um, from Utrecht because then I can be enrolled without having to pay double tuition fees because I need to pay tuition fees in Utrecht because that's where I'm actually studying. I'm not studying in Alpbad anymore. I just need to be in the system so that they can process my diploma. And in order to get the proof of payment, I need to prove that I'm actually going to graduate from Radboud in time so that I can be unconditionally accepted in Utrecht. So in order to do that, I need Radboud to send Utrecht an email that I actually have completed all of my course credits and I'm just waiting for the examination board to approve all of them and upload them on the system. And then while that's happening, Utex is essentially saying, we can't send you a proof of payment until you are fully unconditionally accepted in our system. And then Radvar is saying, well, if you don't have a proof of payment from Utex, then we will de-enroll you because technically you're not paying for anything. But in order to be in, you see, you see my problem. You see, you see my problem. You see where two plus two doesn't equal four, and my brain can't work anymore. But fear not, because something is finally happening. I finally have all of my credits, and now I can request to get my diploma. Because apparently, in university, you don't just automatically graduate. You actually have to tell them that you want to leave, even though you've completed everything. Uh, so now I got to tell them I want to leave, and I got to pick a graduation date, which is going to be in November. November. Can I pronounce anymore? No. Um, anyways, yes, this is this is a marvelous achievement that I've been trying to acquire for two weeks now through seven different emails that I've sent. So I'm very happy and uh, can't wait. Can't wait to have that certificate in my hands, bro. Yep. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Hello. Stop it. <laughs> I got some Earl Grey tea and a pineapple cake that my aunt baked and she brought a couple days ago. And two big boys going, baby. Dad's trying to massage Chewy. Refusing to get out of bed. Gotta start the day, buddy. This is the outfit for today, and I also have tie-dye socks that are purple. I feel like Carrie Styles, but I don't know because this is like a little bit 
warm tone to me and the pants are cool tone. I don't know if they actually match, but uh, let me know what you think. What's missing? Some jewelry? I also have like blue nails, so nothing is really matching today. And maybe that's the vibe. Maybe the vibe is just every color on the color wheel. Yes, Chewy. Chewy's trying to get my attention. Do you want to be in the video? Is that what you're asking for? Yeah? Okay, come here. Wanted to be picked up. And now he doesn't like it. Okay. okay. Hello? I'm trying to capture the sunset behind me, which is beautiful. Good morning, here's the outfit today. I'm out of breath because I just climbed up the stairs and today is the last day of school for the whole week, but I still have a list of work. We'll see how it goes, but today I have Thinking Arts and, Thinking Arts and Society. Yes, that's the name of the course, and then the girls are coming over and we're gonna watch Enola Holmes. So we're excited for that. Okay, gotta go to class now, which is on my bed. <laughs> I hate online classes. Uh, while others are taking notes, so you are relaying your feedback. Good darling diggity. <gasps> I was gonna say good darling diggity day. This is a horrible angle, a horrible angle. We'll find a better one. Should we want some attention? Cut the cameras. This is good for you. This is nice. Let's try this, shall we? I'll sit here. My class has just ended, so I'm free for the week, technically. Um, I don't think I have homework for tomorrow, but I have to check again, because um, apparently doing your master's means that they love giving you uh, assignments and deadlines due before the classes actually happen. That's not, that's not fun. It's not joyful in any way. My back is so tense from sitting in front of the computer. Honestly, this um, week has really felt heavy, like as in it feels like it just went on forever. And some of the class discussions have been beneficial and educational. You can't always expect your classes to be like wonderful and like thought provoking all the time, but they were this week. It's just that like after a while, it just becomes too much. After a while, I just want a holiday and like school just started. This is only week, this is only week three and I can't speak anymore. It also doesn't help that I'm sort of like always one of the few people who um, have confidence in presenting. I don't think it's based on skill. I think a lot of people are, I think everyone is capable of presenting and like being articulate. It's just about confidence and like being comfortable with doing that. And I think I'm one of the few people who are, so a lot of my groups always sort of rely on me to um, present and talk more than everybody else. And I'm trying my best to draw boundaries and to like, you know, ask for space and like let other people take the rein. But sometimes it's not about like, like I really don't want to hog any kind of attention or like speaking time. I'm not about it this week. And I've verbalize that but sometimes people aren't comfortable and then they're like well <laughs> i don't feel good about speaking in front of people and then i'm like well i can't just leave my teammates we need to put the tasks on rotation because i can't i can't be on high alert all the freaking time like some people just need to to do uncomfortable things sometimes you know i'm trying to be more conscious about the kind of like emotional labor that i do for people even if it's in an academic setting. And it's also like not, I don't harbor any kind of hate about it or any kind of like contempt. Like I'm, 
I'm completely fine with speaking. It's just like, sometimes it would be nice to take a break the same way that others get to sort of like sit back and relax while I talk on their behalf. So uh, that's about it. I think Chewie's just enjoying the sunlight. I think I'm gonna sit out here and read a book. I don't know where I put it, I brought it down. It should be here somewhere. Um, but I need to stop staring at a screen. I need to stop staring at my laptop or my phone. So I'm gonna read and uh, hopefully feed myself. And cuddle, okay, <laughs> bye. All right, I just finished cleaning my room and now I'm like a little sweaty. Firstly, this is Chewy. Um, I vacuumed and mopped the floor. Don't mind that. That's that's self-exposure. That's self-exposure. Um, I cleaned this area because it was like way too bulky. It's all of my makeup. Well, not all of it, but most of it. And that's like my skincare basket. And then uh, I moved my side table. That used to be here and that used to be there. <sighs> See, the problem is I think I might knock that lamp in the midst of sleeping. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to break my furniture. But, oh, Chewy, you better not pee there. You better not pee there. Come here. Come here. Dude, come here. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> he listens. Good boy. All right. So uh, we'll see how this goes.